Team West Indies gears up for T20 series on Wednesday, following the ODI series win against Ireland on Sunday. Details of this story and more in the National Report. <laughs> Welcome back. With the details to the news for Monday, January 13, 2020, I am Sherry Ann Noel. West Indies is winner of the One Day International Series after defeating Ireland in all three games. Manager of the West Indies men's team, Ron Lewis, in reviewing their performance, says it's always good to win tournaments, but consistency is important. What is discussing West Indies cricket team now is to be consistent with your performances. It doesn't matter the opponent. Um, every time you play cricket, you want to keep improving. Uh, you pinpoint the areas that you need to develop on and make sure as you go along, you continue to lessen on those areas so that you could have the complete package where you have a fully developed team that can perform at a high level. So winning any series, some people may say it's Ireland. Ireland have a very good cricket team. Uh, when we won in Afghanistan, Afghanistan to go in India and beat Afghanistan, have a very, they also have a very good cricket team. So winning that series here is very good for us. Lewis also spoke to the excellent performances with the bat by Evan Lewis during the series. And honestly, he's a very talented cricketer, just like most of the other batsmen we have at, at the top of the order, even in the low order, because you saw what happened in Barbados where the low order brought the game home. Um, he continues to grow. He's a very aggressive player. As you know, he was known for limited overs batting, like he have T20 hundreds and so on, which he got picked up in the IPL. Uh, now that we are seeing he is able to bat and control the innings in the longer version of the game. So that too is a plus for us at the top of the order, when you can get a batsman batting through the innings in more than one match as an opening batsman. That is pure development and it's a very good sign for West Indies cricket. Captain of the Ireland team, Andrew Balburnie, says despite the loss, his men gave a good account of themselves during the series and is now better prepared for the T20 series. Andy's been brilliant, Simi, Barry, Barry didn't have a great day today, but he bowled brilliantly the other day. Um, there's a lot of performances we can be proud of. I thought Simi particularly, all three games, was superb. He spun the ball, he was economical. Um, and I thought our, our effort was good in the field. I think we can, can be better in the field, there's no doubt about that. Um, but, you know, I can't fault the guys on the effort they put in over the three games. With the power in their team is, is obviously suited to the T20. That I think most of their team are playing in the IPL or have played in the IPL. Um, so it's going to be very difficult for us, but that's what we want. We're going to a World T20 at the end of the, at the, end of the year. Um, and we've got to be playing good cricket leading into that. So tests like this, the West Indies in three matches here, um, it doesn't get much tougher. but. It's exciting because it's, it's a huge opportunity for us and uh, if we can put in performances and our big players fire, then we can be competitive. Captain of the West Indies men's team, Karen Pollard, says the win over Ireland puts them in a better position mentally for the T20 series carded for Wednesday. It's just a matter of you know, putting plans into place, you know, getting guys to do things consistently and again also getting guys to trust the process at the end of the day. You know, you have to trust the process, you have to trust the system and you, know, you have to be honest and trust the people around you as well, you know, for guys to be comfortable so they can go out and perform. So, again, you know, trying to empower, you know, the youngsters with, you know, that responsibility and, you know, being accountable and stuff like that. And, you know, simple things like that, you know, outside of the actual, you know, cricket. We're working hard on the cricket, but a lot of conversations, you know, outside of cricket. I think we, we ticked all the boxes in each and every department, you know, batting, bowling, you know, and fielding. Um, it's something that you know we didn't do in the first couple of games. You know we, we we got we got over the line in Barbados in the second ODI, and you know we didn't really bat you know well in the first ODI. You know as well to get to get the score. So again, you know being consistent to the ball, you know as well. So I think today you know playing that total team team game in in, good, in all aspects I think was the touching factor for us. Still with news of cricket, Grenada's Prime Minister, Dr. The Right Honourable Keith Mitchell, an avid cricketer, says he is very pleased with the turnout of Grenadians at the third and final ODI at the National Cricket Stadium on Sunday. West Indies won the match by five wickets after winning the toss and electing to field, restricting the Irish team to 203 for the loss of 10 wickets. The turnout today is, is clearly to me um, an example of the interest of Grenadians in, in West Indies cricket. 
And um, um, it is well known that Ireland is not considered to be one of the top teams. And the fact that you have this turnout for a game of this nature on a Sunday with not a top team in, in, in the world cricket playing West Indies, I think, is a, a clear example, demonstration of how West Grenadians um, feel about cricket in general and West Indies cricket in particular. With a contract already signed for the lighting of the facility by Midye, Dr. Mitchell says it will only augur well for future games at the National Cricket Stadium. I think one of the things you will see in the future with the advent of lighting of the facility, had we, if we had lights, we would have, this game would have started about 1.30 and of course going to the evening and of course you would have seen a much even bigger crowd and then the T20 game on, on, on Wednesday would have started 7 o'clock so you have a 4 hours going up to 11 so you can imagine the entertainment and that will come soon in fact I was talking to um, the West Indies co coach and of course the manager of West Indies team Roy Lewis and and um, Simmons and, and they both said they were looking forward to this. They said the players loved this ground. Paula the captain and the players loved the ground, the, the Grenadian ground. So with the, with the love for this facility and with the country involved and the entertainment and, and the people, I think you will see a lot of good cricket matches here in the future. Minister for Sports, Senator the Honorable Nolan Cox, says he too is very satisfied with the turnout as he always knew Grenadians loved the sport of cricket. On behalf of the Minister, of course, and the people of Grenada, we want to welcome uh, the Irish uh, team here and also persons who might be traveling with them. And we do hope they have a wonderful time in Grenada. Um, also, we see the turnout has been, as far as I learned, uh, the turnout here has been probably the best of the, the three one days uh, from the other venues. So we are pretty happy about that. Um, but also we are looking forward to more turnout um, on Wednesday, the shorter version of the game, our first T20. Um, so we are happy about that. And um, so we want to thank persons who have supported and, and come out and continue to support West Indies cricket. This is important. Manager of the West Indies cricket team, a former national and regional player, Raul Lewis, said the turnout of Grenadians in the stadium made him proud. And he also used the opportunity to commend the entire team responsible for preparing the facility for the game. For the gongsmen and the Grenada Cricket Association and the Grenada government and everyone who put their effort together to get it up to that standard. Because you're not having international cricket here so often where you'd have to prepare it up to that standard. Let's say every month you've got to get it up to that, that standard. The, the facility will be in pristine condition because you're always hosting. But we get a match, you know, not very often. And to get it up to that standard, I have to give them praise for doing that. But there are always areas that we need to improve, which I've spotted a few areas, and I have to make some recommendations to the respective persons so that we continue to improve as well the facilities in the Caribbean. But this is a prime venue for West Indies team. The West Indies team manager says he must also make mention of the exceptional reception received at the Morris Bishop International Airport on their arrival and the hotel for both teams. This is the National Report. More news after the break. It's Cricket Again, West Indies versus Ireland, Grenada National Stadium, January 12th and January 15th. First, the Colonial Medical Insurance. Third, One Day International, January 12th, starting at 9 a.m. Then on January 15th, the first Sandals T20, starting time 1 p.m. Admission on both days, member stand, $25 U.S. or $67 E.C. The Junior Murray Raw Lewis stand, $15 U.S., $40 E.C. Posse stand, $5.50 U.S., $15. EC. Senior citizens 60 and over get some free tickets while stocks last. Children 12 and under get a free ticket with the purchase of an adult ticket. Organize your posse, get your tickets now and come support your team. January 12th and 15th. Moving now to news of health, more developments are in the pipeline for the General Hospital. Minister for Health and Social Security, Honorable Nicholas Steele, recently announced that $1.5 million EC has been budgeted for the replacement of the current elevators at the hospital. He said the renovations will take one year. This is going to be a lengthy process. It's going to take approximately a year to replace those elevators. The reason that it takes that long is because we have two elevators currently at the General Hospital. One of the elevators has to be removed and then a new elevator put in. And then after that is complete, the second elevator work can be done on the second elevator shaft. 
um, to remove and then replace that one. This is to ensure that at no time is there uh, uh, the, the um, occasion or, or, or um, risk of not having a, a functioning elevator at the General Hospital. Minister Steele also noted that efforts has been made to preserve the elevators in the past. Those elevators are well past their, their as we would say, shelf life. Um, we have embarked over the previous years on various um, efforts to, to maintain them, but in our opinion, it is now time to replace those elevators. The approximate budget on that is 1.5 million EC dollars. And finally, coaches, physiotherapists and doctors who were selected to participate in the first ever two-day sports medicine conference initiated by former national basketballer Wilbur Thomas in collaboration with the Minister of Sports all commended the organizers for what they termed a wonderful gesture, an excellent opportunity to refresh their knowledge. Cyril Cox is one such coach that is very appreciative for the information shared by the medical professionals in the field of sports medicine. It's very good for our doctors and our um, physiotherapists. It is also very good for our coaches because you have to understand what is going on with your athletes. And it's not just about loading your athletes, but you have to understand how your athletes feel and what you should do with them. What we are doing here is that um, we are getting a feel of it. Some of it is like a refresher to me. Right, um, because I've been through that through studies, but I think all coaches should be aware of the science in coaching. Know your athletes because you might be the one out there, based on our culture, you might be the one out there with your athlete. And so based on what your athlete is going through, you would know exactly what to do with them. Physiotherapist assistant Kelton Worm, coaches Jerry Lewis, Jake Rennie and Sebastian Steele all shared similar sentiments about the importance and timeliness of the conference. This sports workshop has been very informative and educated to me. I've learned new skills, new techniques in examining the patients and this will give me a better idea and a better way to diagnose the patient injury and have a better idea to treat them and able, and able to get them to recuperate properly. You know, in Grenada, we have many athletes coming down with injuries and sometimes we diagnose many times the wrong thing and then we don't fix, we don't fix, eventually we don't fix the right thing. So I think the knowledge that we are gathering here today, you know, and well, over the past two days, yesterday and today, it's, it's, it's great, it's, it's excellent. I, I, I had conversation with some people on the outside and I said, you know, the initiative by the Ministry of Sports to do this, you know, it's, it's, it's a wonderful one and, and, it, and it's served to show that oh, if we're going to develop sports, we definitely need you know, people around this field, you know, to actually um, take, the, take the sports to our next level. To say thanks to the Ministry of Sports for organizing such an important um, workshop. And as a coach, I think it's very important because we as coaches also should know the importance of injury and those kind of stuff. So it is very important as I deal with different teams and in Grenada we don't always have a physio or someone around. So it's good for coaches to know some of the information they are passing on here today. Dr. Andre Hamlet, who assists in sports medicine, says the workshop is indeed timely and the information shared very pertinent. Okay. Well, it's very important uh, in the sense that um, they delivered some really good lectures and also the practical aspect where uh, you're able to do some um, practice session like uh, training and um, how to manage certain, some of the injuries that uh, we see very frequently um, in Grenada. It's also important in the sense also that um, all of the topics that was discussed is related to um, a lot of the sports that are being played here in Grenada. The participants have been charged with the responsibility to share with their colleagues what they have learned over the two days. And with that story, we come to the end of the National Report for Monday, January 13, 2020. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.